Big news today is the list of teams with a head coach opening grew when Mike Rabel was fired this afternoon. That means, as you see there, we now have seven head coach openings as of right now. The Panthers, Raiders, Chargers, Falcons, Commanders, and now the Titans all looking for a coach. Dan Graziano here with us, and that is where we begin. Graz, what can you tell us about how this went down in Tennessee? Yeah, look, there, there, were, there were some discussions that were planned after the season. Obviously, the season ended on Sunday between head coach Mike Vrabel and ownership. And if you listen to the comments and read the comments of team owner Amy Adams Strunk, it sounds very clear that, that she believed that Mike Vrabel and the general manager, Rand Carthon, who was hired a year ago, were not in alignment on the, the vision for the franchise. And so she made the decision to move on from Vrabel, which is an interesting decision given the success he's had as a head coach there. But... That's, that's the direction that the Tennessee Titans have decided to go. It looks like they're headed into a rebuild, and she has made it clear. Again, this is not reading between the lines. This is reading what she actually said, <laughs> um, that she wants a coach in there that's aligned with Rand Carthon moving forward as they begin um, to rebuild and, and ideally head back to the kind of success they had, you know, under Vrabel. At Graz with us all show long, and we've got a lot more on this. We'll hit it a few times in the show because there's so many different ways to look at it. I think we can all agree that Mike Rabel is one of the best coaches in the NFL right now, which makes his firing that much more confusing. Welcome to NFL Live. Lots to get to, as I said. Dan Orlovsky is here. Mina Kimes is there. Marcus Spears joining us in just a little bit. We're going to start with Mina. Uh, excuse me. We're going to start with Dan here, actually. You think this is the right decision for the Titans right now? No, because Mike Vrabel is such a great coach. Yeah. Now, I can understand it if philosophically you want to go in a different direction and whatnot, but you don't just find guys that are great coaches like to the level that Mike Vrabel is. And it really goes to this. The moment that they decided organizationally to trade A.J. Brown was the beginning of the end. You know, in the league, like so often yeah. coaches get fired because they can't coach. That is not the place or the case, excuse me, in Tennessee. The reason Mike Vrabel got fired, at least per – when it comes to the results, is the roster. Mm. This team has not drafted well. Take Rand Carthon's right. draft this year out. This team has not drafted well since really 2019 when they drafted um, Jeffrey Simmons and A.J. Brown in one and two. Ever since then, the first two rounds have been just whiff after whiff after whiff, essentially. So it's hard to sit here and think that they're going to find a better coach if Rand Carthon wants to make this decision and their ownership wants to make the decision for philosophy reasons. I understand that, but man, Vrabel can flat out coach. Yeah, and it does make you think, do they already have their person that they want? I mean, if they were going to make this decision. For the quickness of it? Maybe. Yeah. I, we're all trying to figure it out. I guess we'll find out. Uh, you did mention A.J. Brown. A reminder to those out there that, of course, they traded away A.J. Brown to the Eagles. Mina, is this Titans job a desirable job for whoever gets it next? It's a tricky one, uh, largely because of what Dan alluded to, which is the state of the roster. And it's a state that's kind of confusing, which I suspect the more I think about it might be why they moved on from Vrabel or why there was this parting of ways, because it clearly wasn't uh, for coaching reasons. I think we all agree he's an excellent coach. But I found this team sort of hard to read coming into this season, because on one hand, they were clearly rebuilding, you take a guard and a quarterback uh, in the draft this last year. Nobody, I think, saw them as a real contender in the AFC. But then on the other hand, there were some moves made, signing DeAndre Hopkins, holding on to some of the veterans like Ryan Tannehill instead of trading them. That made me ask, well, are you trying to compete or are you trying to rebuild? Mm. It felt like they were on two timelines at the same time. And I can't help but wonder if perhaps what Vrabel wanted, how he viewed this season, how he viewed the roster generally, might be different or might have been different from where the organization wanted to go. Yeah, I think that's a smart conclusion. Reminder, too, that Derrick Henry, a free agent, they're going to be parting ways. Sure. He said his farewell already to Tennessee. Marcus is here now. Swagoo, what are your thoughts hey, on the firing of Rabel today? <laughs> Made it. It's in line with what Dan talked about. I mean, look, we've watched this league over the time that we started this show, and it's very difficult to find a coach that you can trust in a lot of situations. A guy that you know if you build a roster around him, you can have a tremendous amount of success. I remember us sitting in the studio scratching our head when they decided to trade A.J. Brown away. Mm -hmm. This team is not far removed from being the one seed going into the playoffs with Mike Vrabel as their head coach. This was a roster problem, and I think he's a victim of that. And to Mina's point, it, it kind of became no man's land 
for the Tennessee Titans and and as far yeah. as their direction. And it seems that Mike Vrabel is taking the brunt of the mm. blame for that. When they brought in Rand Carthon, I thought this relationship would materialize with Mike Vrabel and they would start making decisions roster construction wise to put this team in a situation where they could compete every single year. And like I said, he won't be unemployed too long. Don't no. feel sorry <laughs> for Mike Vrabel. He will not be unemployed for a long time and somebody is going to get a hell of a head coach. I do think the roster, Mina, and the job is a little bit more appealing than maybe just because Will Levis had some highs this year. You know, the offensive line, Peter Skronsky, yeah. P Peter Skronsky, their first rounder, looks pretty promising. Spears, they need a lot more help on the perimeter. And there's some young pieces on defense that are solid players, not, not great. Um, for Rand Carthon, their general manager, he's got to find his Mick Shanahan. You know, the, the, <laughs> that group of tree coaches, because he's been in San Francisco or was in San Francisco since 2017. And the elite coordinators that he was around are all head coaches. Yeah. I mean, Robert Sala, D'Amico Ryans, Mike McDaniel. So my mind naturally immediately goes to Houston's offensive co coordinator, Bobby Slowick. I would imagine that Rand Carthon, because they're tied together in San Francisco, that that would be one of their first <laughs> interview requests. But I do think that because of Levis's intrigue, the roster's a little bit more appealing than maybe the record implies. I like McShanahan. Makes more sense than like Shaniel, I guess would be the other way to go about it. Um, <laughs> and I agree. I, I think I think I think your 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 take is good. I also think Will Levis stand would be a good fit for that kind of offense right. um, with his quick release, accuracy throwing over the middle of the field, the toughness, um, some of the mobility he has. So. That, to me, is job number one for Tennessee. Well, job number one, rather, is to address the offensive line. That mm. is job number one, two, three, four, sure. five, six. You got Skaronsky. You got a lot of work to do elsewhere to make Levis functional le next year. Um, but I think finding a coach who fits what they want to do and what is suited to the young quarterback would be the next job. And see, that's, that's why the situation is perplexing. And I understand where you're coming from, D.O. and M.K., as far as that tree. But you knew you had a really good head coach. You don't know if you have a really good quarterback. Totally. And that's the issue that arises yeah. when I think about Fair. this situation with Mike Vrabel walking out of the door. It could go south. Hopefully is it, it doesn't. But to let a guy like this walk out of the door and when you hear his players speak about him and how these guys actually fought for him in a game that meant nothing at the end of the season right. just this past weekend, it's hard for me to accept the fact that he was – the problem and you thought you needed to fix this part of your football team. Uh, Marcus, let's get back to Vrabel on all of this. We, we've talked about what happened <laughs> in Tennessee, <laughs> but where could you see Vrabel landing? Because I think he's one of the best coaches in the entire yeah. league. Who wants him? I agree with you, and I think the Washington Commanders should have a plane on the way right now. Mm. And I was thinking about something as we talked about this. You, <laughs> Josh Harris and his group, he hired Bob Myers to be a part of this search for, firm. And Bob Myers comes from the Golden State Warriors, where a former player has led that team to four NBA championships and Steve Kerr. And I think they I, it has to be something in the thought process of how you can duplicate that success on the NFL side. Mike Vrabel has already proven he can coach. He's already proven he can motivate. He's proven that he actually can win games when his roster is not constructed in a way for you to have a tremendous amount of yeah. success in this league. But I think with that group and how they've been positioned, there's some familiarity with a former player being a head coach and having the type of cachet that Mike Vrabel had. Steve Kerr was an NBA champion as a player. He's an NBA champion as a coach. And I think there's a lot of correlation there with the commanders and where they are positioned now. But you know what I love so much about Vrabel as a coach and why I think he's such a desirable candidate? He has all of the former player bona fides you talked about. He Players play for him. But he also is very forward-thinking. Dan called the game where he went for two down <laughs> eight. Uh, Laura, you were there. I love yeah. that. But he's also has this like long history of uh, knowing the rules better than other coaches and, and being very strategic sure. yeah. about that. Uh, I think where it gets interesting and potentially a little tricky is if, if you're a team that needs a coach, you say, oh, my gosh, Mike Rabel's open. That is free. That's amazing. But Bill Belichick might be available. J uh, Jim Harbaugh. Yeah is likely available Harbaugh, and then you yeah. have amazing candidates like yeah. ben johnson mike Mc, uh, ben johnson's the offensive coordinator for the lions mike mcdonald the defensive coordinator for the ravens raheem morris in los angeles i would argue dan that this is as good a selection of head coaches hmm. that i can remember and honestly 
it also, I think, casts a light on teams that are debating whether to keep their coaches right now, like your Chicago's, your New Orleans, and whatnot, knowing yeah. that all of these guys are available. Yeah, I think your point's accurate, and that's why you can understand the owners in Tennessee saying, like, the philosophies have to match up, and I think that's going to be a huge part of this head coach hiring cycle is if you're the general manager of the organization, do you align with that head coach's philosophy in both like how you're going to build your roster, how you want to play football? I agree. Like Washington should call obviously New England if they decide to do something outside of Coach Belichick should call. I think the two teams that would be interesting would be, and I don't think they're going to get fired, but if they decide to walk away would be Pittsburgh and or Seattle. If hmm. either of those coaches decides hey, I'm going to retire. I don't know how likely that is. Yeah. You probably call those situations. I agree, Mina. If you're a team that is like a, a Chicago and a New Orleans and you're on the fringe, you've got to make a very quick decision because yeah. at some point, Harbaugh yeah. and Vrabel are going to get scooped up. Uh, Dan, really fast. If you mentioned New England philosophy-wise, because that seems to be such an important touch piece here, do you think that – I, absolutely the way yeah, yeah the way that did you want to play football and build a football team the most interesting aspect with New England again if they move on from coach Belichick is that that head coach do you say at the third pick we have to take a quarterback or are you a Mac Jones guy I, and, and some coaches might be and I think that's going to be the interesting thing when it comes to the, like the philosophical alignment yeah when I think about Mike Vrabel I think about stability and if it's ever been a franchise that needs stability, it's the Washington Commanders. Yeah. Especially ushering in this new era. <laughs> and also Magic Johnson being a part of that. And being champions and just having that type of mentality when you go forward. And two, you got the second pick in the draft Marcus, right now. Marcus, you got to be very, you got to be very confident that yeah. his development of a young quarterback is going to be spot on. Tim Kelly, their offensive coordinator, is really good. Yeah. Is he bringing him yeah, with him? Yeah, but you also... But then you also have Tamina's point about it being the strength of this coaching carousel is the known. Sure. Right. Yeah. Like we still taking a chance on these guys that have never been head coaches because you got to deal with a whole lot of other things other than calling plays. But the knowns is what make this a, a strong class, in my opinion.